Medical School Histology, Images of Compact Bone. You'll be able to download a URL to be able to manipulate a piece of uh, compact bone. We'll look for the different cells that are there, uh, look at different structures, uh, terminology associated with that, but you'll be able to manipulate your own specimen, own sample that we will be able to download by the URL that we give you. Medical School Histology, Images of Compact Bone. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University. I teach histology. Also, I have a YouTube site, VIBS Histology. Please consider subscribing if this is some information is useful to you. So you can uh, observe and manipulate these images on your computer. If you go here and download this one, uh, you'll be able to see the compact bone specimen that we have. You can go to this URL to locate, to get this URL, or you can also on the YouTube VIBS histology where it says PowerPoint slides, it also has these slides and you'll be able to just punch that one and to be able to uh, download that uh, image. Now what's the function of bone? Uh, function Bone provides a skeletal support for land animals. Uh, that's what it does. Also some support for marine mammals too, but certainly it does for land. Uh, it also protects uh, certain enclosures. The skull protects your brain. Uh, it also uh, protects other enclosures like where the bone marrow is for hematopoiesis to making the, the red blood cells. So compact bones is the shaft or the outer surface of bones is a compact. So on the outside out through here is a compact bone. On the inside it's called spongy bone or you might call it cancerous bone. And this is where the bone marrow would be in these dark spots. Compact bone is mostly the specimen that we're looking at uh, today. And here's a specimen that we see it. A little bit of spongy bone on the inside, but largely it's a compact bone is a specimen that we'll be looking at. And here you can see one of those spicules of bones through here. This would be the in osteum, uh, and here we see uh, the osteocytes that are located in through there, and we'll talk about those cells in a minute. And so uh, this is bone, and bone is composed of live cells, living cells, uh, and this is the periosteum. Peri mean near, uh, is connective tissue band that surrounds that. So this is compact bone, and this is a trabecule or projection of the cancerous bone or spongy bone. Now, of our specimen, as I said, we'll have compact bone. A little bit of spongy bone uh, in through here, but largely uh, it's the compact bone. And so if you look at one of these uh, uh, spicules of bone, you'll see uh, the spongy bone really has the same type cells as you see in the compact bone. And just inside the opening there is the enosteum. The enosteum is the inside part of connective tissue that gives rise to to width development uh, production of bone. So if you go to enosteum, the periosteum is on the outside. Remember the periosteum here is dense uh, connective tissue that surrounds the bone. That's what's going to be on the outside. So if we look at the specific cells of bone, we have the osteoblasts. That's the cell that differentiates to make bone. And this cell, once it lays down bone, uh, it gets trapped in its matrix. So it paints itself in a corner, so to speak. And whenever it does, the osteoblast becomes osteocytes. So in bone that we have are osteocytes. So these are living cells that are in there. There's also bone uh, cells that eat uh, bone for the remodeling process. Those are osteoclasts, mesenchymal cells that give rise to these fibroblastic uh, cells to lay down uh, new bone. So you see where new bone is being laid down uh, here by these osteoblasts, which ultimately will be trapped and become osteocytes. So osteocyte is an osteoblast that gets trapped uh, in its matrix. And whenever we look at our specimen today, uh, we'll be able to see the actually what we 
all this is dead dead bone and what we see is actually a, a opening or lacunae where the osteocyte was is what is what we see there so whenever osteoblasts are laying down more bone a new matrix of bone it does in a polarized fashion it does it next to the old bone and then finally it surrounds itself and becomes trapped and become osteocytes so we'll have in this lacunae we'll have osteocytes at the bone that we will see uh, see today so a lacunae is a space or an opening it's the part where you're standing where you did not paint yet in, a, in our model so lacunae and then also canaliculi. Canaliculi are channels where cells were touching one another and when the bone was laid down, the osteoid was laid down, protonaceous material, it left a little channel. Those are canaliculi. And here you see where one canaliculus goes in through there. And in our specimen that we'll see, we'll see lacunae. That's what these guys here are. They're openings that we, that where the cells would be. And then we have canaliculi. Canaliculi is where one cell touches the other cell. And it was already touching before the bone was laid down. As a consequence, it has a little channel in through there. And in that channel, where one cell touches another cell, you have gap junctions. And the gap junctions are the source of the nutrients being passed from one cell to another cell. So as we have a blood vessel here, and then the nutrients are passed through the canaliculi from one cell to another cell to another cell via these gap junctions is how the cells inside a bone are able to get nutrients from, from the bloodstream. Now, in the compact bone, and we see a piece of compact bone here, we have these circles that are here and some that uh, are not in circles. Uh, and we need to know some of the names of these components. Uh, one of these circle is the uh, osteon or haversion system is what we call these circles, haversion systems. And the haversion system has a haversion canal. So this canal in the center where blood vessels are is the haversion canal. Okay, and then, so this is compact bone, and then you have the the periosteum on the outside, the enosteum on the inside. Also, you have enosteum uh, inside there where you have the, the uh, haversion canal as well. So, um, you have a series of these circles being developed and for the remodeling of bone. Uh, and so, sometimes you have a circle which is the osteon or haversion system, and sometimes you have space in between. That's interstitial lamellae. And here you can see where uh, bone is being laid down appositionally, that is, uh, is added from the outside. These cells differentiate to make bone cells, and we call them outer circumferential lamellae. And inside you have the inner circumferential lamellae, which you have development of bone from the myozygoma cells in the enosteum. So bone grows in width from the enosteum and from the periosteum is how it does that. Now these channels that are made that lays down the osteon, that's the osteoclast. So osteoclasts get together, make a hole, and then the osteoblast uh, fills in the hole. So if we look at that in the bone piece that we have on the outside, this would be where the periosteum would be. And, and in, just inside there you have the outer circumferential lamellae. You would have inner circumferential lamellae on the inside. Then a trabecule of spongy bone. We see a projection here and here. Uh, and then this is the compact bone, and we see the circles that are in there. These are the haversion systems. We see a higher mag. There's a haversion canal. And so this is haversion system, and this is interstitial lamellae. What's in between the circles is the interstitial uh, lamellae. So we see a haversion system, which is composed uh, of cells that were laid down from the outside. So osteoclast made a channel. And then uh, osteoblast laid down bone on the outside, and then the next layer, and then the next layer, and ultimately you have a haversion canal remaining. And so it, it grows just the opposite of the tree. You put, you put new growth on the inside, not on the outside, like a, like a tree is. So in our specimen that we'll see, we'll see this 
one of Osteon, you can see the Hervergia Canal, and you can see the lacunae uh, of the osteo uh, sites that are trapped there. You can see the can uh, canaliculi uh, projections between adjacent cells. So uh, here we can see the Hervergia Canal. Uh, you see lamellae. So each time another layer is laid down, that's another lamellae, uh, circle lamellae uh, that we see there. Also, we have the canaliculi, which are the projections, uh, the canals that are left behind whenever the osteon is, surrounds uh, cells where they were touching. Uh, and then you have the lacunae where you have cells, and this is the interstitial lamellae. So here we see in our specimen that we'll be looking at, uh, this is the osteon with a, haversion, a, a system of haversion canal. So in compact bone, you have uh, the Volkmann's canal. So blood comes in from here and then it goes from one version system to another system and we'll call that Volkmann's canals. And that's what we see here. So a channel that carries blood vessels from one version system to another version system is a Volkmann's canal. And so now we can uh, take a look at this specimen that we have. We can see this is the outside, this is the inside, a periosteum and a enosteum. Uh, is what we will see. And so whenever the image pops up, we'll be able to uh, change the magnification. You can do that by clicking on this. And lo and behold, we can see uh, the different ones. Here's a, here's a Volkmann's canal. This is a osteon. There's another osteon right here. This is uh, uh, interstitial lamellae that we, have, that we have there. We see the canaliculi that project from a, one cell to another cell. So this is a com, uh, compact bone is the main piece that we have, but then a little bit of spongy bone projecting uh, off the surface there. So we have the, the periosteum, the, and then uh, we have the different reversion systems, and so we can see there's one reversion system, another reversion system. Uh, this is interstitial lamellae that's inside there that was not that was part of a previous version system, but whenever the osteoclast uh, ate this hole, it ate the hole uh, right through here, so it didn't eat a complete version system, it bit parts of several ones, and that's why the version system don't look like they're all lined up in a column, uh, because you have partial version systems from previous ones uh, whenever you uh, re remodel. So that's basically uh, the different uh, compact bone. Uh, as you know, we got a different, got the periosteum, enosteum, version system, and, and version canal, uh, Volkmann's canal uh, in through there. And then the different cells are the new cells that are laid down. The thing would be osteoblasts. They become osteocytes when they get trapped in there. And the big group of cells which is a multinucleated cell, I don't have a view of that, uh, which makes the whole uh, is the osteoclast. So uh, those are the things that we said. So this concludes what we had. Uh, we talked about the, the Boltman's Canal, we talked about the version system, the enosteum, the periosteum on the outside, compact bone, and, and spongy bone, and that bone uh, provides a structural support of things. Thank you.